my sin is mine. Uh, after a little bit of personal things going on, I'm finally getting to do uh, section number three of the videos that you guys requested, which is talking about some of the things uh, that are in the glossary and pronouncing some of the things from the old language. And before I get into that, I really do want to reiterate something that I've posted on the site in response to somebody um, who asked about the videos. You know, all the things that that I'm pronouncing for you on these videos, it's just how I hear things in my head. Um, I have only seen one interview with the warden, and while I would love to see more, um, this is just how I hear things in my head. I don't know how the warden pronounces a lot of what she writes, um, but that's the really interesting thing about reading, is that everybody hears it differently in their head. Everybody reads and pronounces things differently, and that is 100% okay. That is completely and totally okay. I mean, how I hear things in my head may be completely different from how you guys hear it. And that's perfectly fine, because books belong to their readers. When, when you read something, you become a part of it, and it becomes a part of you. And it becomes yours. The characters become yours. So how you read it, how you interpret the story, how you hear things in your head is yours. And it's correct for you. So how I read things, this is how I read things. This is how I pronounce it. It's how I hear it in my head. So that being said, um, I'm going to go through some of the things from the glossary. Um, honest, obviously I'm not going to go through the English stuff because it's pretty simple, I think. Um, on that being said, if there is anything that you guys do want me to pronounce, send me a message um, and I'll do that for you guys. Um, but for now, I'm just going to go through some of the old language stuff and I'm going to start right at the beginning of the glossary, which glossary in this version, because as we all know, she adds things as she writes. Um, so, from the beginning of the glossary, from Lever at Last version, um, Astrux Notrum is how I read the private guard, uh, which is what Quinn is to uh, John Matthew. Um, to avenge someone, honestly, I don't think that's a whole lot different from the English, um, so I am say it's to avenge. Um, the symbol of honorable death I say it Cree. To me it looks kind of Irish, which of course my name is Irish, so I have a little bit of bias there. But I read it Cree. Um, the contest is the conflict between two males competing for the right for a female's mate. Um, Dund, I believe is how you pronounce uh, their version of Hell, which I'll be the first one to admit. If someone pisses me off, I tell them to go to Dund. And they give me a weird look, but I don't care. Uh, and let me just say, uh, Dog N is the next one on the list. Fritz is the cutest damn Dog N ever, and I wish I had a Fritz in my life. Uh, Eros is a chosen trained in the matter of sexual arts, and I believe that's based off of the Greek. Um, the evil or cursed twin, I pronounce it as Exile Doble, uh, which I'm kind of relying on my knowledge of Spanish for that one. Um... The custodian of an individual is a guardian. I don't think that's a whole lot different from the English. And the social core of aristocracy is the Glymera. And the only thing I have to say about that is fuck the Glymera. Enough said. Uh, a male mate is a hell wren. A term referring to a lapse in judgment, I say a hislop or a highslop. Um, honestly, since I haven't read this book yet, I haven't seen it used in context, so it's a little... I When I read something, it's it's easier for me to pronounce it if I see it in context, and I haven't yet. So that one, I'm not really too sure on. So that's my best guess. A high slop. Sounds messy. A person of power or influence in the Glymera, that's a leader. Honestly, I don't think that's a whole lot different from the English. Um, the term of endearment, Lilan, oh my god, that is my favorite word in the entire old language. My husband calls me Lilan, 
and I think it's the most adorable thing ever. So that's like my favorite word. Um, the old language word for gift, the term of, endear of endearment for gift, uh, is lulen. That's my other favorite. I tend to use that a lot. Uh, I'm going to skip over the mythical beast because I have no idea how to say that one. Um, Lenian, maybe? I don't know. If you guys have any ideas, let me know. Because that one I have no idea on. But the torture tool uh, is a Lee. And the word for mother. I want my kids to call me Mamen. Like, I don't have kids. I want kids. I don't have kids yet. But I want my kids to call me Mamen when I have kids. Because I think that's the most adorable thing ever. Um, the masking of a given environment. I call it a me. And, of course, the words for beloved, Nala or Nalam. I call my husband Nalam because I think it's cute. Uh, a virgin is a newling. A term referring to a potency of the male's sexual organs is fearsome. I, I think that's a clever play on word there by the warden. I give her props for that. Uh, the highest level of vampire aristocracy is a princeps. And... Referring to a critical weakness of an individual is a pirate can't. Let me just say, I have used that in my personal life. Like, something being my, my pirate can't. Holy crap. I get weird looks for it, but I don't care. Because I just think that's very... I just think it's very clever. Um, I'm, I get excited about words. Because I write. So, whenever I find clever usages for words, it just gets me excited. And I really think that Pyrocant is a really clever turn of phrase, and I applaud the warden for that. Um, the name for savior, I believe, is Ralman. Reminds me of the noodle soup. I don't know if that's... that's how I read it. The ritual manner of assaging honor is a writhe. I want to see more writhes in the stories. Like, I don't, I don't like to see people get hurt, but I just think that's a really interesting way of doling out honor, and I want to see more. Um, the status conferred by the king upon a female of the aristocracy is seclusion. Again, I don't think that's too much different than the English. Um, the female mate is a shallan, that's how I say it. A subspecies within the vampire race, Sympath. Fucking creepy. And that's all I'm going to say about that. Um, word used between males of mutual respect and affection. Translated as beloved friend. I say it as trainer. And I think that's cute. That they have little a little pet name for each other as guys. I just, I just think that's cute. Um, and then an individual who has died and returned to the living from the fade is a walker. Again, I think that's a very clever turn of phrase used by the warden, um, and I applaud her for that. Um, I, I think it's a perfect, um, just a perfect picture for what that, that person is and what they've gone through, and I think it's very significant. And of course, an equivalent of a godmother or a godfather is a ward. Um, I think she may have been playing on her last name a little bit there. That is the glossary. Um, and as a little bit of a bonus, I also thought I would throw in the names from the Band of Bastards. Uh, at least the three of them that we know. Um, because I had a lot of questions about that too. Um, so we have Kor, Throw, and Zypher. And those are the names from the Band of Bastards. If you guys have anything else that uh, you want me to do a video for, whether that is pronunciations or just wanting me to answer a question on camera rather than in type, let me know. I enjoy doing that sort of thing for you guys. I think it makes the community more interactive and I love hearing from you all. So you guys take care and I'll see you again later. Love you guys. Bye, Sinner's Mind.